Welcome to another uh, video and we're looking at um, question 4 for the uh, 2015 um, paper so let's have a look at what this is all about so um, Sarah uploads uh, this photograph to her blog okay and um, first question Sarah a photograph contains GPS data okay GPS which one of these statements is true it's truly really a tricky question this one which one of these statements is true? Okay, have a look at that one. All digital devices use GPS. GPS does not use Sarah's internet connection. GPS uses cloud computing. GPS works better with open source software. Okay, have a think about that one. Well, the answer is B, because uh, not all digital devices use GPS. That's not that's not true. So you could put like a little F for false. GPS uses cloud computing. No, it doesn't. It uses satellites, isn't it? Uh, GPS works both open source software, mm, not really. So really, if you want to do like a, which is, which go the opposite way, it's got to be B. And GPS does not use Sarah's internet connection, which is a true statement. Explain how the use of GPS data could impact on the privacy of individuals. So GPS. So let's pretend you've got your um, you've got your smartphone. You've got GPS on. Okay, for various reasons what does that mean what it means is that your device is in connection with satellites okay so it, with, with you know it's, it's coordinating itself in terms of its location with multiple satellites okay so you've got your device it's okay what impact on the privacy of individuals have a think about that one Okay, and because obviously the, the you're being tracked, aren't you, um, by the, by the satellites? Okay, the satellites not doing the, doing themselves, doing it themselves. But often, um, you know, it, there could be apps or um, websites or social media that actually say, "Oh, just checked in here," or sent from, or or whatever. And um, that could be really unwanted. You know, the fact it's location, position, your movement, where you are, it might be quite cool to do that. But you know, if you just checked into um, the Marriott Hotel in London, you're obviously not at home, and someone could burgle you. So <laughs> it's not obviously the best thing to do. Also, um, yeah, well, can track and locate as I was just saying for inappropriate purposes. They could track you down, maybe find you, and you know, rob you, steal whatever it could be okay and not things like stalking so don't um I, well actually you know the, the guidance that says you can use things like stalking as well so often um you know if you're going away or going somewhere turn that off so um you, you don't know people don't know where you are sarah compresses the image to reduce its file size okay describe how this improves a smartphone user's experience of sarah's blog okay read the question a couple of times there's some key things in there have a go at that one well um, obviously compressing the image okay you can do that you know um, with, with with most um, computers so compressing it reducing the size the quality of it okay so imagine you're then using a smartphone to look at the blog okay what what are some of the key things of a, a key features of a smartphone okay uh, well the connectivity issues screen size so you know um, will you know it will fit the, the actual image will fit better on a uh, smartphone screen okay and appear better and also it's faster because it's compressed it and made it smaller it, you know you know what it's like if you've got a bad connection okay um, and you're trying to download so it can take ages um, and you think well why am I bothering so often compressing for smartphones but also for computers will make it appear on the screen a little bit better and faster next question if visitors to Sarah's blogs can like a photograph this is a social networking feature which yes it is describe how this feature helps Sarah to promote her photographs have a think about that one Okay. Well, obviously, if you, you know your her, her her photos are being light, what is the benefit 
of that okay um, so you know other people are going to her um, blog can see that a particular photo that she's taken or whatever has been liked so that's popular oh let's go and have a look at that thousand likes um, also other likes generate more um, you know uh, publicity so you know things could you know go viral spread through you know the internet um, and also if, if things are liked more there's popularity things and you want to look at it it's like when you get in Facebook or otherwise you get a video that's had like a million likes you think, oh that's worth watching uh, same sort of thing and also um, friends influence influence uh, each other um, also you could put in things like it also helps her realize you know what uh, is popular but you need re a real good description okay just not listing here a real good description so that you know that is the uh, the, the the key word there Sarah's blog uses cookies okay in 2012 the law required websites to obtain informed consent from visitors before using cookies explain why this law was required okay why was that required so obtaining informed consent from visitors before using cookies you've seen those messages pop up at the top of web browsers and websites click here to agree to cookies why 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 is that required okay answer because um, you know they get you know by agreeing to that you're agreeing to the company the website collecting data about your um, visit to their site so it could be things like username and password if that's relevant it could be browsing history um, and they're basically gathering data okay and they've got to do it they've got to hold it and store it in a, in a proper way also um, if you look in the terms and conditions it's often then used to target marketing for you so if you then go back to that site they might promote stuff to you that you looked last time and also it raises privacy um, concerns in terms of them holding information which cookies basically hold about your web visit okay so a whole host there RSS oh you, you know this is quite a, quite a difficult Sarah's blog has an RSS feed describe what service the RSS feed provides to the users of Sarah's blog okay have a think about that one well what an RSS feed is is a way of getting updates okay receiving updates automatic content now you can get all sorts of updates you can go into the BBC RSS and get you know updates on sport or news or whatever whatever you're interested in um, and you you can actually embed that in your website but I think what she, she's done um, she's got an RSS feed okay um, to her users so they would get regular automatic updates of, of changes or things that have, have, have done that and you obviously sometimes you see this on blogs say you know do you want to subscribe to this blog and basically that's sending um, updates to you um, about um, new things okay and they can also be sent subscribe um, and more post the um, posts you, you, you know you'll get um, maybe emails or messages with with updates or new things that are happening on the uh, on the blog okay big question here a big six marker blogging gives you the right to say anything anytime in any way okay so a bit of a provocative sort of statement again the reason what they're trying to do so if you see a star by the question see top left of the screen you see a star that means they're actually judging you on your ability to sort of argue and discuss things and you get at least a mark or two on your spelling and grammar as well now here's some discuss the legal ethical and moral responsibilities and challenges associated with digital communication so it's quite a tricky one isn't it but really you want to start thinking about in your head where the markers are going now this is the mark scheme for this question okay so basically if you don't write anything you don't get anything there's nothing or you don't write anything that's relevant you get nothing 
if you go down to the very bottom and you see what gets top marks the candidate will produce a factually accurate response that includes relevant responsibilities and challenge challenges associated with digital communication discussion specialist terms used consistently good focus and organization um, and rules of grammar are considerable so we're looking at you know pretty much the whole of that space to be filled up you know, good spelling good layout and and relevant points if you go down to the the bottom one level one the one to two marker it's you know a bit rambly it's a sort of random out of language it's not clear it's not very accurate it's not answering the questions okay so with that in mind what do you think might be some of the answers have a think about where we're going to go with this and then I'm going to reveal it and you know what it's basically basically if you look at the question and put it another way um, what are the um, using digital communication you know what are the the issues the challenges around legal ethical moral side of it okay and um, yes you, you know it's a bit of a using advantages and disadvantages so the advantages legally are that you know you have freedom of expression speech um, you can say what you want on the internet you know um, but also um, legally there could be some issues about copyright okay although communication allows freedom um, people are going to be protected so there's a there's the copyright I suppose the privacy issue as well and that statement at the top you know right to say anything anytime anywhere. you can't you can but you, you can't you might get yourself into, into trouble um, you know uh, so you know you've got to be careful moral and ethical so moral is doing the right thing and ethical uh, is a similar sort of doing the right thing um, and treating people fairly so you know if you if you say anything you want on a blog you've got to make sure that you're considering the audience that you're not um, you know saying things that are misinterpreted that the netty cat that you're saying things in a right and proper way that you're um, but also on the other hand um, you know you're making sure you're, you're aware politically and culturally uh, of, of what's going on in terms of sort of um, complications um, you know there might be be um, you know you can argue the case that okay um, that, that you, you have the right to say things but things are very hard to to uh, interpret and enforce and that people can be anonymous when they say things um, and also there are issues about distribution of content so really you know, it's quite a tricky one it's one of these where you've already got to think about you know laying out your answer you haven't got a huge amount of space in doing that okay Thanks for watching question for 2015.